So what's up guys? I'm your host Andy from Primacy Gaming and if you want to learn how to do a custom water-cooled PC build with components like these or ones you've purchased, stay tuned to this entire video series. So let's get this build going. Okay, so the first thing you're going to want to do is get your motherboard out of the box, place it on an anti-static discharge surface. The box will work if you do not have a pad like this. Connect yourself to ground if you can with a grounding strap and get your CPU out of the box. There is a small triangle on your CPU. You need to find that triangle on it for the orientation into your motherboard. Once you've found that triangle, find the same corresponding triangle on your motherboard. It will be in one of the four corners. Make sure that these two are matched up. Grab your CPU with two fingers and all you're going to want to do is just set it in place with the triangles lining up. Now once you have that set in place, if you have a uh, pin style CPU, kind of just give it a wiggle, make sure it seats into the socket. This is the reverse style, the pins are on the motherboard. We're gonna put the latch down, noting that this says to lock this one first and then the other one. So I didn't get that unstrapped there, so give me one second, I gotta get, get this underneath there. And now we're going to press down, lock this one, and we're gonna press down and lock this one. And now our CPU is firmly in place. And now we're going to move on to putting our water cooling block on. So this is where we're gonna use our thermal paste. We're using this uh, MX4 uh, Arctic th Thermal Compound. You can use Grizzly. There's a whole bunch of them out there. Works fine. But we're going to use about a little over a grain size piece of uh, thermal paste on the processor. So once you do that, I would suggest using a spreader and spreading the thermal paste out. So I'm gonna do that real quickly here. We're gonna spread this out, get it spread evenly across your surface as best you can. All right, so now we got our thermal paste on. We're going to put our water cooling block on. We've already mounted our studs for our Fantex water cooling block. We've twisted those in place. The Fantex water cooling block has these nice little adjustments in case you have a different spacing layout on your motherboard. So we're just gonna, play, we're gonna place that right on here, get these lined up, all four of them, and we're just going to start cranking it down. And we'll speed that up for you guys. So guys, that's how you install your CPU and your water cooling block onto your motherboard. All right guys, so now we have our cooling block installed and now we're going to put our RAM in on our motherboard. So we have our motherboard on a flat surface because we will be applying some pressure to it. So definitely make sure it's on a flat, a fairly hard surface if you can. Now with the RAM, it's important to note a couple things really quick. There are dim slots for each motherboard and they are labeled. So Look at the labels. This one's DIM2, DIM1, then DIM3 and 4. In your owner's manual, it will say, if you're using, let's say, two sticks of RAM, it will tell you which DIM slots you need to put them in first. So this one would be DIMs2 and DIM4 we would install if we were just doing two sticks of RAM. Otherwise, the system will not work correctly. So make sure you refer to your owner's manual for that and also refer to your owner's manual to make sure your motherboard is compatible with the speed of RAM you're using. This is 3200 megahertz Trident Z RAM, which is capable of, in capable and compatible with this board that we're using. Now, your board might not be capable of handling a certain speed of RAM or a certain maybe brand of RAM it might not be compatible with. So definitely consult that before you go and buy expensive RAM that you cannot use on your board. Now to put it in is fairly straightforward. 288 pin RAM, pretty straightforward. Look at the slot and you can find the slot on the RAM stick in the middle. There's a short end and a long end. Locate that on your on your dim slot, make sure your lock tabs are all in the open position. And what we're gonna do is just kind of start at the end that does not have the lock tab on it first. 
kind of just a little bit of a tip. Make sure you got that lined up with that little slot. And then you're just going to firmly push down on both sides, kind of just maybe one and then the other. You'll hear it click and click and you'll see it's locked in place. And that's all there is to installing your RAM. If it does not seem to be going in correctly, just stop, take it back out and try it again. Make sure everything's lined up correctly. Don't force it in place. Otherwise you may break your RAM or possibly damage your motherboard if you're putting way too much pressure on it. So that is how you install the RAM. We're putting four sticks of Trident Z, which is 64 gigabytes worth of RAM in this motherboard. And this is capable of doing the quad channel um, up to 4,000 megahertz plus, according to the specs for this EAV, EVGA X299 motherboard. So let's keep moving on with the build and continue on from here. Okay guys, so now that we have our RAM installed, we're going to install our two terabyte Samsung 970 EVO drive. It's pretty straightforward. You take your thermal pad, which we've already just peeled off, you stick it right where it's supposed to be on the board. Refer to your owner's manual to make sure you have it in the right spot. And these are really simple to install. Just go at a slight angle, maybe about you know 20 degrees, 30 degrees, just clip it, just wiggle it a little bit. You'll get the slot right in place. It will kind of just hold itself up like that. And then you'll put your screw in place. So this little, and it's a little tiny screw, but let me here. This little tiny screw has already been removed and we will just lightly screw that in place. And those are really small, so they're easy to strip out. So just get them screwed in so that it's holding that drive in place. And that's how you install a onboard SSD drive on your motherboard in an M2 slot. Very simple to do. All right, guys, we have our four sticks of RAM put in the motherboard. So now we're going to do a quick test to make sure our motherboard is actually functioning. We're going to hook it up to the power supply, a monitor, a mouse to make sure everything boots up because we want to do a quick test to make sure everything's working before installing anything into the case itself. Because if you do have a problem, you want to find out before you do a whole bunch more work and then cause yourself even more headaches. So let's get into that right now. We'll do a time lapse on this. All right, guys, we're going to unbox our new uh, graphics card because we're gonna install that on the motherboard just as a quick test to make sure everything boots up, it recognizes the graphics card and everything actually works. So I'm gonna unbox that real quick and speed this video up again. All right, guys, so I got this EVGA's uh, 2080 Ti out of the box here. And let me just get it unwrapped. This thing weighs a lot. This is that copper, hydro copper uh, graphics card. And man, it has got some weight to it. I mean, I ain't kidding when I say this thing is insanely heavy it's got to weigh i want to say this thing probably weighs i don't know th three pounds four pounds i mean this thing's got some serious weight to it so for sure it's got a couple pounds i mean it feels like it uh, definitely looks very solid i mean really heavy duty but uh let me peel this off so you guys get a shot of this and andrew if you get a shot of that thing So we went with this exact um, graphics card because it's already got the water cooling block installed. And honestly, by the time I did the math on getting my own water cooling block and installing it, I really wasn't going to save a whole ton of money. So I went with this because it looked really good. It's factory installed and it really wasn't going to be a big price point difference to do it all uh, to put a water cooling block on the graphics card myself. So. We're going to take the sleeve off and this thing 
weighs a lot. So let's get it put in here. All right, guys, we have all of our stuff set up. We killed the lights so you can see the screen really well. And we're going to do a quick test on all of our components. We wanna make sure our motherboard works, the CPU works, the graphics card works, everything boots up before we put anything into the case. And luckily we did that because we just tried to boot up on it and the CMOS battery was dead from the factory. The problem is replace that CMOS battery on your motherboard. I would suggest doing that because on this one, you would have to take the motherboard out, flip it over to get this shield off, to get at the battery. And if we put this in the case before testing anything, uh, it would have been a nightmare to try to take it all back apart to replace one little battery. So now we have a new CMOS battery put in, which is just one of these 2032, uh, just you know, like a watch type battery is on this particular case. So let's do our boot up to end this video off on a successful note. So fire in the hole, we're gonna try it out. And so far so good, we have lights again on the board. Before it was just killing off and now we have our RGB lights on our RAM came up. Um, it looks, we got everything looks like it's, all right, well, we're doing a lot better now. That looks great on the screen. And excellent. Our 64 gigs of RAM shows our i9-9920X processor showing, everything attempts look okay, our mouse works, the keyboard actually functioned correctly, so this looks real promising that everything is showing up correctly, voltages look fine, everything looks like it's supposed to on the boot up. So that is how a boot up should look, and you wanna do that for sure before you start installing stuff in the case, because if you don't, you're you're just gonna have a bad day. So we'll shut this off because we're not cooling anything here. We don't even have anything cooling. We just do a quick test briefly to boot it up. It's not gonna hurt anything. Do a quick test to make sure everything runs. Shut it all down. Now we'll disassemble this and we'll start the case build in this next video. So thank you so much for watching and we'll see you in part two.